Hello everybody, it's later the same day and actually now after a day and a half of prep, including doing my 12 for my bodice, then I'm going to now finally start to sew. So I've just come to my machine, I've done my bobbin, but the other thing that I've done is I've just changed my sewing machine needle. Now I do like these needles here, which are the Schmetz Microtex, and because this is such a thin fabric, then I've used size 70 for this one. So they're really good needles now. I'm not much of a snob about many things, but I do like, like my Schmetz needles. The other thing is that when you're disposing of your old needle, just remember that if you've got an old vitamin or um, um, tube, um, bottle like this, mark it up as being sharps inside it. And then this is what I use to put all of my pins in and needles. And I did a couple of upholstery projects. There's got some old staples in there and what have you. Anything that might poke through into in a um, refuse bag in a, in a bin liner and, and, and hurts me. So I just pop them in there, keep them all together. It's getting quite heavy now, actually. Um, and um, we use that. So I just put that on the shelves. I didn't know if any of you knew about that or not, or whether you'd got any, but that's always a really good thing. And vitamin tubs are really quite robust, so they're quite nice and um, safe to use. Um, so yeah, that's it then. So let's have a look and get started sewing. So I'm going to construct my um, lining fabric and my main fabric at the, uh, not at the same time, but at the same stages. So I'm going to work first with my bodice back. So I'm going to find my pieces for that. Put the others one to one side. So I've got the side back here and I've got the centre back here. Now with princess seams, you've got to sometimes do a little bit of easing in. So you've got to take your time with them. So let's just work our way through that. I need my need pins. Okay, so I've got my pins now. Should all be ready, shouldn't I? And I'm not. So I'm just going to take off the um, piece pattern pieces and just put these to one side for the moment. And I'm going to put a cut to one side my lining fabric as well. So first off, I'm going to start and do the top of my my bodice front. Oh, no, it's bodice front. Hold on a second. I want the bodice back, don't I? I want the bodice front. Put that out to one side. It's better. Right, okay. Always best if you match matching the right plate pieces together, isn't it? And we need to remember as well, we need to do a left and a right side, so we need to make sure that that's right. So let's put those pieces out of the way for the time being for the bodice back. Okay, so let's just lie this out so that we've got it straight. So we have one bodice back and front there, and then we have one bodice side and back there. Okay, so let's work on one at a time. So that's going to get my mirrored image. The fact that we've got a silk organza on one side does help this because then you can see where you are. And the first thing that I'm gonna do is match up the top here under the arm where the seam is supposed to finish. And then I pop down and I match up and I match up the fabric. So if there's a difference between your silk organza and your pattern pieces, then I am just matching up my fabric edges and using those as my, my the standard go-to. We've then got some notches on the side here. So I'm going to match up my notches again here because that can make sure that if there is any easing, it's in the right place. And I'm putting my pins at right angles as well to my seam. That also makes it easier to work with. If there is any slight difference, then what I do is I just split the difference. So here we can see we've got a, two, a little bit of difference between the two seams. So I'm going to go straight to the middle of there first and put my pin in, making sure that it's equal on both sides. And then I then smoosh my fibres together again and split the difference again and put a pin in the middle of there. And what that means is that when I sew, that excess um, distance or excess fabric will just be eased in. And sometimes we need that excess fabric to be able to make a garment sit right on us and to um, share that extra. We're working with bias edges, so just be careful. Don't start stretching everything all over the place and pushing and pulling everything. Again, just split the difference and put our pins in at right angles. Make sure 
really match those edges together. Oops. Just make sure everything's all lying nice and flat and together. Okay, so that's got that one pinned. Let's pin the next one. Again, match at the top under the arm first. Starting point. Then match at the bottom, that's our ending point. I'm going to match our notches. Whereabouts are those? Are there? And there. So your notches really are those little um, triangles that you see in the fabric, sorry, in the on the pattern. And what they do is just help that we get the right pattern pieces matched together at the right amount. So you've put front to back and back to front and if they don't fit and your notches don't fit, then I would urge you to have a look at your pattern very carefully. Sometimes if you made pattern alterations, yes, you're right, it can knock your notches off generally speaking they are there or thereabouts in terms of where they should sit okay and sometimes just by massaging the fibers a little bit of your fabric you can get those to sit very nicely so again let's just match the difference here we're wanting to, we, want, we do match the edges together to get the right um, distance on each piece, but also you're matching at the seam line, so where you're going to actually stitch. So that's the other thing just to bear in mind. There might be a little bit of difference between the circumference of your pattern piece at the outside edge, but at the point where your sewing line is, it should match. Okay, I'm happy with that. So I'm going to sew these first and then we'll come back to the line. Trim our threads as we go as well, makes tidy up at the end nice and even. And we just open this out and just have a look. Yep, happy with that. That's nice and smooth. There's no puckering anywhere. Got a nice bit of roundness to that. And that's all looking nice. So let's do the next one. This one I'm going to have to work from the bottom up. you're just feeling with your fingers to make sure that your fabric is lying flat underneath your needle where you're going to be sewing just between that and the next point with your pins 
make sure that the line the seams are together and I've actually got my walking foot on which is making sewing sound a little bit um, noisier but I find that walking foot is really good with delicate fabrics and this one definitely would would slip around if um, if I wasn't careful So as you can see, my tacking threads here are actually just on the inside of my seam allowance. So I can now, now to finish that, to making sure that there's no catch at the top there. It's not going around the corner. If there is, just snip it off and just slip through your loop on the end. And then you can just pull those out if you wish to. They come out really easily and that's why i say to you don't worry about i did did or go all gung ho at it once and um decide that it would be far quicker for me to machine sew my silk organza onto my garment and of course then once i tried to take it out at the end it was like trying to have a tug of war so again that's all nice and flat so i'm happy with that take out the um, thread in on this one you can leave it in if you want to but I think I just just feels neater if it's taken out to me oh that's one piece this side just, just pull straight away and really easily sewn through so I just snip that close to it and it should come away so. okay so we have again always best to check we want two mirror images of these thing because this is the back seam and that's where it's going to match across the back there where the zip is so that's all all good so I'm all happy with that so I'm just going to take this over now to my pressing mat um, and we're going to use a tailor's ham and just press that. So I'll take you with me and we'll, we'll do that next. Okay, so here we are at my pressing station and um, I just want to talk to you really just quickly about um, tailor's hams. If you've um, not got any of these, then they are really useful to get. Then don't cost much. Make a great Christmas present to yourself or from somebody else to you. Different shapes and sizes. This one actually is one that my um, sewing buddy Lindsay has made for me as a gift and that's fabulous that's actually a really lovely big one and the idea is that you've got a, a curved surface over which to press your items the other thing that you will need is and where's it gone it was here um, a pressing cloth now mine is a bit battered and a bit dirty so please don't judge me for that it does get a lot of use um, but it is still still working well so um, those are really good presents to have and I use them all the time so the first thing that we're going to do here is we've got our seam on our on our um, back. So I'm going to use my pressing cloth and I'm going to just put it over the top. Just being very careful. Watch the temperature on your iron as well. Just test that, make sure there's nothing on your iron that's going to mark or affect your stitching ability pressing ability should I say and then once we've done that then we're going to use the curve here of the pressing ham to press the seam open and get to it and this one's quite a gradual curve so I haven't clipped it but as you can see once I put my pressing cloth over the top I really must make myself a new one of these a little bit of steam just to press that open and the ham does make a really nice surface for you to press against and as I say it's got a lovely curve to it so you're not trying to take something that is you're going to want to be curved on the body and press it on a flat surface Just 
just use your fingers just to press that seam so you can feel that it's open. I think some notching will be in, in order just on this top bit here. So I'll just have a go for this, see if we can do it out. Just be careful when you're with the steam as well that you don't go and burn yourself. But yeah, that's sitting nicely in. No, you don't really need to notch that. So again, just press it up using the curve of your of your ham, pressing cloth over the top. There we go. So that's a really nice seam on the outside and a really nice seam on the inside. Such a gradual curve that I don't think it needs to be clipped the moment so yeah we'll do that so let's move on to the next one so we can press it flat first there we've just sewn this sets the stitches into the fabric really important step and then from here we're going to open up this seam here just press it open with our fingers just to start it off you can feel if it's flat or not Once we're happy, pressing cloth over the top. This is the same silk organza that I've interlined the fabric with. Let's try that this way. Have a curve needed, perhaps. Just a, so just adjust your garment around on your top of your hand until you find the right curve that you want for the part that you're pressing. As I say, take care with the steam. Don't have any singed eyebrows or eyelashes. There we go. Use your hand just to keep that heat in the seam. And there we go. Just press it from the top now as well. Pressing is really important, it really will elevate your sewing because you'll never be able to quite get into the seam quite as well as you can do at the moment. So there we go. Beautifully pressed seam there. I don't think you can even see where it is, can you, on the, on the camera? It just goes up here. Okay, so let's um, do that, repeat that now with the lining. We'll do that step with the lining and then we'll start and work on the, on the front. Okay, that's the back done. We're all finished on those pieces. I'll pop them to one side just temporarily. Now I'm going to work on the front. So again, I've got my pieces here that are from, made from the silk organza. Much easier to do it, work with these now. Got a much steeper curve on this panel, and this is to go around the side of the bust. So we just need to, so just as before, just lay it out. Let's put that out to one side, that's the lining. So just lay it out first so that you've got the right pieces in the right place and you know how you're going to be working. Okay, and then we'll take this side first and pop it over onto here. So we're going to do exactly the same as we've done before. We're going to match at the top here first. Top of our seam. Put a pin in. And now go down to the bottom. And then put a pin in just here as well. With princess seams, there's a little bit of magic happens because you're taking something that's flat, 2D, and you're making it 3D. So you have to trust the process a little bit. So again, generally speaking, there's no easing down this side at all until you get to the um, get to the notch. So let's mark that first. There's usually a notch on the bust point itself as well. Now, I've moved my bust point down, so I can't match that at the moment. But I also know there's generally no easing on this top part of the bust as well. So I'm going to line that up next. This is where we're going to hope and pray that we've not got any big red florals right on top of our bust line. Okay. And then hopefully this is all going to sit on top of each other very nicely and play together nicely. So I'm just going to keep easing up because we know that we want the maximum curve is going to be on the actual apex itself. And so just by easing these together nicely, ah, oh, they're playing beautifully. That's good. 
fan of a well drafted pattern that is and accurate cutting out and marking and tacking I'm just going to use a few more extra pins around this curved bit here because we want that to sit absolutely right and together and because we're working on the same piece of fabric I'm going to pin one first and then I'm going to sew it so this is what we've got at the moment we've got all of our pins all the way around here on the curve and if we open it out we can see how that's going to give us the shape that we need for for the bust so yeah looks like we should be okay with our flowers hopefully so let's have a go at sewing this one now. the secret with doing princess seams is just to take your time there is no rush on these at all oh pins got caught up so the only thing you're rushing against is yourself and generally speaking the more we rush the more chance there is that we need to stop and unpick so remember to do your seam allowance forward and back to start and if you've got a needle up down the button I will press that to always keep your needle in your work just take your time all the time just to make sure that you're smoothing underneath that needle and make sure all your edges are absolutely together if you're turning a corner and you feel like your work's bunching up just lift your presser foot and if, if you don't know if you saw there's a little give there just with the pre foot with, with the fabric and it just allows the fibers just to relax a little bit just take some of the tension off and allows you just to work around that curve very nicely and gently get quite close to your pins before you take them out as well otherwise as you saw earlier I had to then just make sure that my seam was realigning again just keep tucking your fabric round and under you want it all flat going underneath your needle to your next pin for no puckers and no gathering at all on our um, seams especially on the front for lining you might be able to get away with the odd little pucker but if you can you need to be able to get it so it's completely straight because it, believe me if it shows at the time of construction now that you've got a pucker it will show every single time you wear it and it isn't possible to iron that out either it will they won't go believe me i've tried when I've done it before. All you can do is unpick and then start again. So there we go, we've got our seam sewn down through here. And if we open that up, that's going to give us a lovely shape, a lovely curve there, as you can see. So let's do the other side before we take it over to the eye. And on this one, I am going to clip it, but I did hear a tip, um, actually it was from Alison Smith of um, Sew Wardrobe in um, Ashby de la Zouche. And what she suggested was that if you are clipping on a princess seam, don't go through both sides at the same time, at the same point, because it can um, create a series of straight lines. So what we'll be doing is we'll be separating this, separating this out and then clipping one side and then turning around and clipping the other. And I'll show you how I do that when we get to it. Um, I can show you now, let me show you now because it's done isn't it so basically normally when you're clipping a seam you'll put both sides together like this and you'll just snip 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 and you'll just go through at right angles to your stitches and it just releases those fibres and allows them to curve round the, the corner but when you've got a princess seam especially on a bodice like this you want to be able to separate out so let's start this one say an inch from the edge and we're going to draw, do, draw cut our little snips up towards the seam line but not through it at about inch intervals taking very great care not to cut through our stitches at all so my fingers are on the seam line so that I can't cut through about every inch just not about three or four about two or three mil away from your seam line because it'll it'll allow it to stretch out down 
And then what I'm going to do with this side is I'm going to start in at half an inch away from the edge, like that. And then I'm going to go every inch again, and that should mean that the, the two, I don't know if you can see that or not, but the snips are not in the same place on either side. So that snips there, look, but that snips there. So it just offsets them. And that is supposed to make your princess seams sit more smoothly. And I'm a great collector of tips from different people. I do think they do add up to quite a wealth of knowledge. And then when we press this, you'll see this when we press this later, that should so that's all snipped now all the way along that, that seam. See these snips? Okay, but they're not on top of each other. See they're offset slightly? Okay, I know, enough. Let me guess I'm going to do the other side and I'll come back to you when I'm pressing it. Okay, so back again with our pressing and we're just going to press this seam flat first. We're just going to do it in stages because it is quite curvy and we don't want to try and make it lie straight. The whole idea is that it is a curve because it's going to fit around a bust line. And then we're going to then, I'm going to use my other pressing hammer because it's a bit smaller for this one. So we've got much more curvy shape on here. So again, let's do the bottom half first. It down with our fingers. top bit and I'll show you how we do the, the next bit. What we're actually going to do is probably this side actually is use the end of the pressing ham. Exactly the same way, but we're just using it on its end just to pull those. You just use whichever bit fits your shape of your bodice as, as best as possible, really. Just watch out for the skin if you're doing this, with your hands unprotected. Just use the clip just down here. Just take a little bit of time, but you'll you'll get it right. And if you do take the time just to press your clothes in as you're sewing them, it really does just give them a real elevated finish. Yeah, lovely, lovely and happy with that. Can I see that seam? It's beautiful. So let's just press it from this side as well. Just use this half of the and to start it off. I could feel it was a bit not quite straight. Okay. As I said before, the pressing ham just, uh, not pressing ham, pressing cloth just takes all of the harshness away from the heat. You still need the heat, but you just We'll just make it just sit so much a little bit more beautifully. Okay. And anybody who thinks making their own clothes is quicker, <laughs> I don't know how they manage to make it quicker. But I'd much rather wear something that I've spent some time making. Oh, that flower, that flower matches perfectly. There's a seam running right down the middle of it, and we didn't do any pattern matching at all. Bizarre, isn't it? But we'll take that little win. 
So again, let's press this one flat first. This is why it's important to do your twirl as well first, just to check your fit, because whilst we can alter the fit afterwards, if we're most of the way there already, then hopefully it'll just be the side seams that we need to perhaps do some little bit of alteration with. Oh, excuse my neighbour's dog barking, sorry. It must be walk time, it goes crazy, it's quite most of the time, but then just goes crazy when it's time to walk. Bottom first, let's turn around and do the other side. And you can see how these, um, I'll show you in a minute, how the notches open up to, to go around the curve. And that's what gives them the extra space to then form the curve nicely. You can see on there how that's just opening up even by a few millimetres. Just makes all the difference. Again, let's come back onto this end here. Oh no, the other side we used, didn't we? Mark in there for just a second. Okay, so there we go. Got our bodice with our nice curvy bust points in there. Next thing I'm going to do is is do the um, lining, and then I'm going to join these together at the shoulders and at the sides, um, just at the shoulders first, and then I'll show you how we so these um, put these together now. So yeah, quite pleased with that. See you in a minute. Okay, so what I've done now is I've got my lining here that's all been had the prince front princess seams done here. And now I've got, got the back pieces now. The curve of the princess seam is away from the centre back. So you know that when you've got that right, because on this piece, normally you'd have a high back on it, but there's a low back on this dress. So it's just the same. And so I'm just going to lay those out, making sure that I've got mirrored pieces again. And now I'm just going to pin at the top of the shoulders. So again, just line your shoulders up. pins at the start and the finish should do. Just make sure that they don't stretch out and then just do the other one. Sometimes when a project starts to get together like this it can be difficult to orientate it to make sure that you're putting your jigsaw pieces together properly. So if you're unsure just get your pattern pieces out or have a look in your instruction book and it'll tell you how to which way is the right way you can then match them up with the pattern pieces so you know where you're going. So I'm just going to sew these two shoulders here across one and across the other one and then I'm going to do the same with my um, outside bodice as well. So I want my princess seams pointing towards the outside not towards the inside and the slope of the shoulders should be the same as well and they are. So I'm just going to match those two together. first. So you'll be surprised if you do do the interlining with the silk organza you'll be surprised how much easier it makes your fabric to handle as well as giving you a fab fabulous result as well. I know I'm going on about it sorry it's just that it really does make a difference but you'll see for yourself when you try it anyway. Okay so two shoulders pinned there on our main bodice and then two shoulders pinned here on our lining. So I'm just gonna go up and sew those now. Okay, and once you've sewn those on the shoulders, then you go to your pressing mat 
I'm just going to press those open. There's no need to clip because they're a straight seam. So just press those open like this on your lining and on your main fabric. What I'm going to do then is, um, I'll just tip you up again so you can see me. What I'm going to do then is I'm actually going to just tack together by hand on the seam allowance these side seams on the bodice, both sides. And I'm also going to tack along the seam line here for the um, for the centre back, um, but not close it, just through, through one layer, just give me a reference point. Because what I want to do then is I want to just try it on. Because if we're going to make any adjustments, I want to do that first before we've actually sewn it together with the lining, because it'd just be so much easier. So that's what I'm going to do next. Then I'll um, I'll try and take a post photograph if I can and, and show you how it's fitting. Um, if I can protect my modesty whilst we're doing it. So we'll see how we get on. But so for now, just press open your shoulders on, on all four of your shoulder seams. And then I'm going to just hand tack down the side seams here so that it's, it's a completed bodice at that point. That isn't the stage we want to do once we've finished it. Um, I'm going to undo that before, to attach the lining. But if we just try it on now, we can make any final adjustments to the bodice before we actually all sew it all together. So I hope you're with me at the moment and it's all making sense. Um, just one other thing as well. I haven't overlocked any of these edges to neaten them. The bodice is fully lined, so all of those raw edges will be enclosed anyway. And, I, I, and because we've got half an inch seam allowance, then I don't think there's going to be too much worry of unravelling. It's not fraying too badly for me at the moment. So I'm going to stick with that. On the skirt though, um, I'm either going to overlock it on the edges down, depending on how it fits, because I've got a feeling the skirt might be a little bit on the tighter side and I probably could have sized up a little bit for that. But until I start to put that together, I won't know either. So we'll um, we'll come to that when we get to it. But for now, for the for the bodice, I've not done any neatening around any of the edges because I think it's just add bulk and they're all going to be enclosed so you won't see it. Okay, let's go and uh, get these pressed and I get it tacked and we'll see where we are. Okay, so here's the bodice. This is how it's fitting. I think you can see we've got a nice curve going round the waist. There's a couple of creases just under there, but I'm wondering whether they will just drop out as the skirt's on and, and the skirt pulls it down. Fits quite nicely around the back here. And again, that's only just pinned at the moment. And once the skirt is on, I think that's going to be okay. I like how it's fitting round under my arms. I don't feel like there's any gaping or anything there when I've got my arms down by the side and as I say that will just pull down slightly with the weight of the skirt and the same because the fabric's so so thin then I think that will just look just right so that's the bodice for my dress princess seams look all nice and smooth yeah happy with that so far so that's where we are so now that I've um, um, tacked these sides just by hand. I'm going to undo that now because we're going to put the lining together with the front um, so that we've got it as one piece and that's what we need to do next. So I'll join you back in a second and we'll, we'll do that. So. Morning everybody, it's Claire again here and this morning we're going to carry on with our cashmere upton dress and last night I finished off by just adding on the waistband onto each of the three bodice pieces. So there's a waistband piece added on here and on the other side and then on the bottom of the front as well. Now I did just tack this up again and just try it on with the waist on and it's looking good and I think that the waist is going to be fine so so I'm going to carry on and, and sew this up with confidence. Sometimes within halfway through making a garment I do sometimes get a bit of and a nervousness just that it's all going to fit right after you spent so much time on it but we're going to carry on with confidence and um, hopefully we like the, 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 the finished garment. So what I've done now is I've undone the, the stitching on the side seams again where I just tacked it that just came out really easily and what we're going to do now is we are going to attach the lining and the top together. So what I want you to do is and I'll just let me just move the camera and the, and the thing and I'll show you what I want you to do. Okay, so we're going to pop the top main body fabric down and we're going to have that facing upwards on our work surface, whatever that may be. And we're going to take the lining fabric, which I've also attached the um, waistband to and I have interfaced that waistband as well. And we're going to just lay that over the top. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to match the shoulder seams here. Make sure we get those seams right smack bang on top of each other. And then we're going to pin. Okay. 
and then I usually go across to the other shoulder seam just so that I get the orientation right and I'm not going to get any twists or anything. And we're going to pin that one together as well, making sure that that's sitting straight. Now, although we're not going to sew the other side, I do then match up the other side and put a pin in it, but it's just literally a holding pin. I'm not going to stitch that side at the moment because we want to be able to do this neck edge first and then understitch, which is a really useful term. And if you don't understitch at the moment, you might find it's a bit of a game changer to your sewing. So once we've got the shoulders um, matched up, if we adjust our lining, that should pretty much lie straight on top. And what we're gonna do is gonna put pins all the way around here. And then we're also going to put pins around the back here as well. So around the back edge here. Because if we kind of put all of our match points together first, so like at the centre of the back here, and again here. Before we start doing all the detailed pinning, it just helps us just find our way around really. So just to say that when you're actually um, lying your fabrics down, you might find that occasionally you get a bit of a situation where the fabric doesn't want to lie quite straight. Now, just remember that we've actually cut these pieces out from the same piece pattern piece and therefore they should fit exactly. So what we're going to need to do is it may mean that because this is a bias edge where it's been stretched, when it's been worked with or tried on, we just need to try and get these down as fast as we can, do, as flat as we can do, because it's they should match. So what we can do is just keep doing what I've done before, which is splitting the difference, and just making sure that we get these to, to lie down as flat as possible. And with a little bit of massage in the fibres, you'll usually find that it surprisingly will sit straight. You'll think sometimes it's never going to, never going to get meat in the middle, but it will do. Just keep with it. And some of this we can flatten down as we're actually working with it as well. So there we go, starting to look something like plenty of pins. We're going to take it nice and slowly because if you think about it, this is the neckline. This is where everybody's eye is going to be drawn to when you're wearing this garment and we want it to be absolutely spot on. So there we go, a whole load of pins on there. Let's go over to the other side and see how the other side is looking. Oh, don't need that pattern, please. And this is where having our start and our end points helps a lot here because we can actually, we know where we're aiming for. This one's much better for sitting flat straight away. So the other side must have just got a little bit stretched. Arts working with it. You can put a line of stay stitching down here as well, which does help. If you just use it one or two millimetre in from the edge, it does just um, add some stability to it. But I omitted that stage, I must admit. And I've been, I've been lucky. So in the future, I probably will keep doing that. Okay, there we are, and then off to the sew machine, and we're going to sew all the way around. So I'll put this down. Start at the back zip, all the way around the neck, and then come all the way back down to the down to the rest of the other side as well. So that's what I'll be doing. And um, the other thing that I'm, I think I'll do as well is I'm going to go from the back centre back round to the front. I'm going to stop at centre front. Oops, off screen off at centre front and then start from the other side and then stitch in. It just helps with the um, stress lines on the on the garment. So I'm gonna sew in that direction towards the next centre neck line and then just overlap slightly at the centre front, okay? Okay, so now I've um, sewn along here, all around the neck, and I've actually snipped into the neck line as well so that that line will, will, will lie flat when we press it through. Just to reduce bulk, what I'm gonna do is where we've got our seams here and here and here and here. I'm just going to cut off at 45 degrees those little ears because that will help reduce bulk in these seams at these places here. 
So just snip those bits off very carefully, making sure not to damage anything else. And again, over here. So again, just see where your seam line is. You've got a little bit that flicks up. Just take that off. It's not going to compromise the seam at all. It's just going to reduce that bulk because you're, you're leaving the actual seam line intact and just taking off the excess fabric there. Okay, so it just looks like that once it's done. You can see, snip, 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 snip. Okay, and then what we're going to do then is going to press this flat and then we're going to open this out um, and we're going to press all of the seam allowances towards the lining because what we're going to do next is do a little row of stitches just a couple of mil in from the edge of our neckline on the lining side holding all of the seam allowances that way that's called understitching and what that means is that when, when we fold this across none of the lining should then fold should roll to the outside I mean here we've got a one that's really good a real good match but if it was a contrast one, say it was a white in a black garment for some reason, or a red in a green garment or whatever, you wouldn't want that lining to be, sh to be seen. So understitching just helps that. So for now, let's go and press it flat first like this. So press it flat like that on our ironing board, and then we're going to fold this over, and we're going to push all of our seam allowance towards the lining, and then We'll come back and we'll do the understitching around the neck. Okay, so if we look here now, we can see that all the all the seam allowances are impressed towards the lining. And look, I've got water on the top of it. Um, and then here you can see that that's all nice. We can just just put a little bit of pressure on it just to pull it slightly apart as we're as we're sewing, and that will just um, hold that open. So let's have a look at our machine. Now for this I'm going to move my needle position right across to the edge, so my, for me it's stitch number two. I'm just going to move that straight across there, that just makes it easier to line up. And I'm going to sew on my bodice side and my needle is going to fall on the lining side. So here now I can use the edge of my foot, I'm just going to move my needle across just a smidge. And we just want the needle just to be a couple of mil just the other side. I'll show you when I've finished and then you'll see what I'm doing hopefully. But um, it'll just, it, you have to trust me for now, it's just going to just fall down just on the, on the side of the um, lining. Nice and slowly onto a nice neat edge. Nice and even because these stitches are going to be seen all the way round. Just manipulate your fabric round, just pull it straight as you go in. As I say, it's almost like a magic stitch, this one is, because it really does stop the lining from turning the other, other way round. thought I'd just show you this so this is what we've done so all of the seam allowance now is just sewn across to the to the back and we can see the edge of the lining is just a couple of mil over here and now I want to press it so that it sits like that on the neckline and as you can see that's going to sit beautifully and give us a lovely smooth edge to our neckline Ooh. lovely smooth edge to the neckline hopefully you've seen that Okay, let me go and press that now. So when I'm pressing this, I'm just going to press it with the fashion fabric, top side of my fabric, to the ham, using the ham again to get this lovely curve and shaping into this garment, the neckline. I'm going to use my pressing cloth again as well. I'm going to try and not get stress onto your neckline we're actually setting this neckline now, so we need it to be as straight as possible. A little bit of steam. That's nice and straight. 
right, it's beautiful. So you can see how it's sitting before we press it, how it's curved up, but once it's pressed, look, look how lovely and flat it is. Careful not to singe our fabric on our iron. Set it all to lie flat for you. It's worth getting it right. So just take those extra minutes if you need it, just to manipulate that product in place. Just check in now, it's a little, a little bit too proud there, so I'm going to just re, re steam that piece. So I'm happy with that now, sitting beautifully flat, look. Nice and clean. So now, what we're going to do now is we're going to turn the neckline back the other way around and we are going to join the underarm seam here not the seam just around the around the um, that goes around the arm and we're going to join this around here and on both sides and sew the underarm seam together so I'll do that and then we'll then show you how then clip it and then we'll press it as much as we can do and under stitch it and then we'll uh, before we turn it around but we might um, We might understitch it when it's turned round. I'll see how it goes when it when it's working. But yeah, pleased with how this is coming together for now. Okay, so I've just finished sewing round the um, armhole edges, and I've just clipped those seams as well, so they lie flat. And I've trimmed off my seam allowance as well. Oh, found some threads. Threads everywhere, aren't there? Sometimes. Okay. Now, what I thought I'd do is because what we've got to do now is turn this bodice round. So if we actually lay it out so you can understand the orientation that we've got at the moment because quite often you have to do this step and then I know that people it can be a bit confusing because you think it's never going to go so what we've got is we've got our bodies here and we've got our back pieces here and these are the shoulder seams and what we're actually going to do now is we're going to pass each of these shoulder seams through the centre here so if you open up through from your bodice this is the little gap we're going to get through um, and the way that I've found it best is if the, you find a corner of your top and I'm putting my finger through the armhole to try and give me something to lever to hold on to and my finger's gone all the way through to the back piece. Now if I can match this back corner up to my finger we know we've got a way through all of the fabric. Just peel it back. There we go. And now we have to just be careful. We're just going to pull on this little bit here gently. Okay. We don't want to pop any stitches. We don't want to do anything. The thicker the fabric, the more difficult this is. And can you see it's just coming through? There we go. Okay. And then we're going to press this this flat in a second. We haven't understitched it yet because it's difficult to do, but what I'm going to do in a minute is I'm going to do that now, press the seam allowance as far as I can through to the um, linings, yes, through to the lining side, and then we're going to then understitch that to help that lace dread. So let's do this again. So we've got our back piece here. This is our front piece. I'm going to put my finger through 
or you can put a little hook, hook thing through if you've got a, a hook turn or whatever. So I've found my way through my lining here, all the way through. Then I'm going to find one of my pieces of my back. And you can find your way through your fabric this way. Let's turn it that way, you'll be able to see my finger th through the gap. It's a bit like working in blind with this, but it does work. That is right. So there's my finger through from, from the bodice. Literally just, just match those two together. And then if you don't let go, as you peel this back here, you can generally find the piece that you will pull in. If not, the old age old way of doing it this way also works. It just takes a little bit longer. Just ease that back through. You can see it all pulling through the sausage shape. I've let go, haven't I? So it's not worked for me this time. The first one worked perfectly, didn't it? You just like working with it. Oh, there it goes. I found it again. Look, and then just pull on the end of there, and it'll just pull through. So now we have our bodice, and when we sew up our side seams together here. That will fully enclose all of the seams on the bodice here so I'll show you how to do the side seams next but for now I'm just going to go to the ironing board I'm going to press this so that the seam allowance is towards the lining and then I'm going to under stitch as far as I can get I might not be able to get all the way <coughs> excuse me up to this top of this bit here on the top of the things it's too narrow for my machine get into but I'll just stop there and then I'll come back here and then do the other side as well so we do that on all of those four places and then I'll come back to you. Okay, so now we have got our very beautifully finished, if I say so myself, um, top. We've got our lining inside. We've now just got to sew these side seams together. So to do that, what we're going to do is open this out on the two side seams. So hopefully you've seen that, that's the armhole there. We're going to open this out and we're going to match the match points so we're going to start with matching the underarm first i'm going to push all of that down towards the lining side because that under stitching will mean that we can't do much else with it so pin at that anchor point then coming down to the waistband i'm going to match the waistband We're going to come over to the other side and we're going to match the waistband here as well. Okay, so then now all we need to do is just put some more pins in to hold these. We've got notches on the side seams that we can match. These are just straight seams, so these should be okay and should just sit nicely together. Not on the bias, so there should be no easing to have to do. And if we've used the same seam allowance all the way through, so we're going to do that one, and then we're going to then match up the other one. Just make sure that you've not got your, your strap twisted and you've not joined it with a twist in your strap because otherwise you will be undoing it. So at each stage, just hold it up and just make sure that that's going to armhole's going to sit nicely. So again, no twist, match the underarm point first on the other side with everything, with the understitching going towards the lining. If you just open it up, you can just see your um, where your seams are together and just roll them along because the actual match point is on the seam line, is at the quarter, half an inch seam allowance line. So that's the, on a curved edge, that's the important thing that matches. Okay, and again here we're going to match our waistband. And this is where you see sewing a consistent seam allowance is really important because then that means that all of this is all going to line up beautifully for you. If you've not got a 
consistency and allowance especially on a back like this where you've got a waistband and we're going to fit the skirt in you're going to find that these are different and when you try and match this up on the outside to make your zip um, sit nicely it, it won't ask me how I know um, but um, we've got little fixes that we can do to remedy that so I can um, share those tips with you when we get on to that stage but for now we're nearly finished with the bodice We've nearly finished most of what we've got to do apart from putting the zip in, which I will be doing later. I've been invited out for a walk with my friends, Alan and Janet. So I'm going to be popping this down in a minute once I've finished these side seams and getting myself ready for that. I'm going to go for a walk down by the beach. We're very lucky here. We are, we are only about 10 minutes, 10, 15 minutes away from, from the beach down at San Pedro. And so that then means that we can enjoy that one wherever we want to. And it's a bit, little bit cloudy today, but it's not too bad. It's still fairly warmish compared to the UK. So fortunate with that. Right, let's just take off those threads. OK, so next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to run along here with the sewing machine. And then when I've finished, I'm going to press those seams open. And then we'll, we'll have a finished bodice then. So just making sure my seams are all going to match. And they should do. Okay, yeah, so those are the next thing to do is those two side seams and then I'll show you that we've got a completed bodice. So I just thought I'd show you a quick close-up of the finished um, bodice at the moment. Nice smooth neck edge. Obviously mannequin's a little bit smaller than I am. Um, but as you can see, some nice arms. Holes. Arm side. A little bit extra pressing to do just there, look. But that's that looks just a pressing issue. Here's the back, wait, just pinned together at the moment, waiting for the zip to go back in. Back in, just waiting for the zip to go in. And again, all the way around. So, yeah, I'm pleased with this. It's going to be a nice, a nice dress when it's finished for the summer. As you can see, we've got some nice clean lines. And the fabric's sewn up really quite nicely. So I'll leave it there for now and we'll be moving on to the skirt. <laughs> 